What's up, guys? Chris here from Drift HQ. I'm Cricket with Drift HQ, urging you never to put RB25 in a C4 Corvette. Cross member back in. Now we're gonna see if we gotta cut this thing up to make it fit or if we can just work with the stock one. So we have these big tabs on the top of the cross member here. We're trying to figure out whether we can utilize those to actually build our motor mounts or if we're gonna build something that's gonna go further back on the motor to kind of take some of the weight off of our trans cross member. All right, so we were cleaning up this cross member over in the wash bay and with the cross member bolted up, you can't find it, but there's a big hole in the side of the cross member. And look what we found in there. I found the original build sheet for this thing. And if you look really closely, it came stock with an RB25. Yeah. <laughs> factory motor replacement. This actually came from the factory, so is everybody putting stuff on the car, and then the guy's like, yeah, it's about right, and just shoved it in the frame, so cross member. It's like an Easter egg. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty cool. And you can see how hot it got, too. Got a little I'm going to check all Corvettes now. You got to take them apart. Pull the cross member out? Yeah. <laughs> it's a little harder than it sounds. But anyways, we got this guy. That Adam just brought us. Don't have our turbo manifold. We have our intake in stock, but we're just gonna kind of retrofit the motor. Got the ZF trans, needs a little cleaning up, but right now we're just mocking things up. And we got our beautiful PMC adapter here. Now we're not gonna be putting our clutch assembly and everything like that in right away. It's just gonna make the motor a little bit lighter and easier to maneuver. And we're also waiting for a rear main seal and a few more gaskets, so. That's gonna go in first with the trans and just kind of see what kind of space we're working with. We're gonna put a crank pulley on it just so we have our full length of the motor and trans together all as one. It's so cute. That's beautiful. You'd love to see it. Ah. You pretend like you know what pole you're putting in there. I mean, it's kind of just a trial and error process. If it fits, it ships. And I don't know what I'm doing. But either way, <laughs> there's diagrams. Honesty on. is the best policy. Actually, no. You know what I'll do? I'll put a diagram, like, right here, of how this bolts onto there. And then you guys can comment and tell us if we did it right or not, based on what the diagram looks like. Because we're not going to look at it. Yep. You good? Drop it. Right. Took the engine cross member back down because our pan clearancing is a little bit off. So now we're just kind of getting general engine position to try and center everything up to see if like this wiper motor and stuff's going to be in our way. We're going to try and scoot this back just a little bit further and see how much crank pulley clearance we're going to have. We had the crank pulley on there before. It did not want to go in where we wanted it. But we're hitting that wiper motor. I don't know how centered we are right now. <clears throat> Pretty close. Modifications must be made. This little guy right here is gonna get notched because our pan dips down. Probably gonna cut a little bit more than we actually need to, but you gotta have a little bit of room to kind of wedge the motor in there as well. So he's gonna cut this out and reinforce it with what steel? Some thick steel? It has 3 sixteenths mild steel. Yeah, some 3 sixteenths steel just to reinforce it. So we're gonna cut it first, bolt it back up, and have him finish while it's inside the car so nothing warps or gets chippy. Fire safety crew. Here is the remnants of said firewall. We're gonna make a new uh, aluminum plate for it, block off, but we're gonna test fit first, see if I have to do any more clearancing to make the valve covers fit. Made a lot of room. Our main interference point was there's a big notch out right here, but the motor sits down to about there. So with that amount of clearance that we have, I think we'll be all right. So we'll give it one good test fit before he starts flat sheeting everything just to make sure we don't have to go further. Go down with this, guy. this stupid bracket, whatever the hell this is for is in our way. That's good. <laughs> Alright, that's good. Now come up with the motor just a hair. Because now our crank pulley is sitting on it. So I'm um, using a Garrett. This uh, cardboard is sponsored by Garrett. Hopefully our turbo will be too. I'm doing a block off plate for the firewall. And then I'm going to do another block off plate where the heater core and the blower motor and everything for the AC used to be. We're not doing an expansion tank, but we are doing a catch can. So we're going to do our catch can there, fuel pressure regulator, and all that fun jazz. So currently I'm just making a template CAD cardboard aided design 
template. Then I'm going to make it out of aluminum. I'm going to cut it with my plasma cutter, grind it all down, make it nice and smooth, mount it onto this firewall. Then we'll end up RTVing it or doing some black silicone or something to seal it off. That way none of the water comes down from this. And we're going to do another plate that goes up and blocks this all off so the water actually drains out through the sides how it's supposed to and not onto the back of the valve covers. So that's what I'm working on. All right, this is our delete for the blower motor and air conditioning. That guy right there. I just stuck it over top of a piece of cardboard, drew around it, drew out my circles, and, and you know, bead roll too. Bead Probably rolled it. You know, always got to put a little mustard on it. How many times have you guys done this? Yes, we have taken this motor in and out like what six times now? Yeah, like four times in and out. This will be the fifth and not the last. We test fitted it before we made all of our sheeting, so that worked out good. Now, I'm gonna try and whip up some mounts. There's a what? What a weird Hummer. What's going on here? <laughs> we got us a fire truck. We're here that you guys are building fire and we're here to put it out. Well, you build the fire though. Oh yeah. Just in case I start a fire. We have a plasma man intake manifold. Unfortunately, with the RB, we have to put it farther back into the firewall to clear the pulley. This is about two that inches. Goes about to here in our notch on the firewall. And we have to go all the way back. So that piece that he just made for the firewall, now that we have our plasma man, which would have been nice if it was like two inches shorter. We don't want the plasma man, we want the plasma boy, like the little guy. Unfortunately, we're gonna have to take this, cut this and take a little bit more of the firewall out on this corner just to make some more clearance for our intake manifold. So we went over to the R32 that's over there and measured the pitch on the motor. So these motors actually sit, um, what we measured about nine degrees towards the exhaust side. So now we adjust our pitch so that it matches that because the oil pan actually has a kind of a pitch to the base of it too. So now our oil pan sits almost level. That tilt actually might have got us all the clearance we needed for the intake manifold. So we might not have to chop that up after all. Hopeful. 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 Optimistic. We're going to find out. We're going to do the engine mounts first and then we're going to put it on there and see if I have to chop any of that beautiful firewall we built yesterday. Oh, that beautiful piece. Uh, well, actually I didn't use a notcher because I don't have a hole saw bit big enough for this. So I just took in, an easy way to notch these is you can actually just take the corners off of it and it'll match. Uh, all I did was I put it in the vise and I cut the angle this way, the angle this way, grinded it down and it fits nice and tight. All the way around. This guy here, this guy here. No way. So we got our Rotors, calipers, everything off of this thing. Now we're going to send our knuckle and control arm assembly over to Josiah at FDF. He's going to build us a cool little one-off kit for this car just to get our first of all our track width wider in the front to fill in the body kit. And these things, the steering angle from the factory is ridiculous. It's like 17 degrees. Like this thing can't even make a U-turn on a three-lane road. So this will come back all adjustable, beautiful, and ready to roll. So a customer asked if we would be so kind to decorate his box for him. So I handed it off to Cricket. Cricket did his creations. Of course. So I put, put your head in here, take a sweet picture with your parts. It's a magnet. It's, it's me. I got the mohawk and everything. And if you want to talk shit, you do not talk about my mohawk. Yeah. Just that little extra for the customers, you know? They're P magnet glasses. Just take a gander. Hey. And we still got about a finger's worth of clearance underneath the crank pulley, so that's cool. Is that the measurement we use? 
I mean, it was a ballpark just to see how much it would sag. I could slide my finger underneath it before and I could my still slide my finger. Well, so Chris went in and checked the uh, how much height clearance we had on the trans to the trans tunnel and we had enough so we just jacked up the trans a little bit and it pitched the motor forward enough to clear our insect manifold. Plasma Barely. man fits, don't even need a plasma boy. It'll fit, as long as it fits a business card, that's plenty of clearance. That's more than my tires clear on my over fenders. Tell me. And this is a thicker card than what fits in my... Oh, baby. Look at all that. She's a little tight. And if you have a complaint, go ahead and call that phone number. Joel yeah, will answer. actual phone number. Oh, shit. We got a delivery? Yeah, What's up? Andrew Maurer. Is that an X-Brace? X-Brace. This comes out of a convertible C4, just for more chassis reinforcement. We're going to use it for our, our trans brace because it should, the trans ends like right here so we should just be able to build a bracket right off of that, mount it up to this and maybe build something else off of this for the diff depending on how much, you know, how strong it is. We'll see. We're going to put it in though. We have to make uh, rear mounts for it because they only come on the chassis, the coupe with the ones for the front. So I have to drill up through the frame and weld on flange nuts and then it'll be able to bolt up. But pretty straightforward. We'll see when we bolt up the front. I thought I had to use a plasma cutter today. She did really good. She made all of her own block off plates for a Corvette. First time <laughs> using it and it came out perfect. She followed all the lines. I like that thing. We bonded over our mutual fear of cutting wheels. Yeah, hate yeah. cutting wheels. Screw cutting wheels that all day, yes. No thank you. See this guy. Right here. So we ended up doing our engine mounts today, getting those all finished, welded, put in. We got the engine to where we want, our transmission to where we want. We got this X-Brace that we ended up mounting up. It came out of a convertible and they didn't have any spots to mount it back here. So we ended up making plates and welding nuts to the backside. And now we have mounting bracket for it. Tomorrow I have to finish weld on the insides of this. It just got a little late. We have dinner plans with our boy AJ. So uh, he let us borrow his Hummer to get to work today because Chris's car was in the shop. So we're going to cruise over in that and uh, have a barbecue, cook some picanha. That's Brazilian steak. And uh, just relax. It's going to be great. I'm excited. Beer time. Go, baby. We come over here after hours and drink beer with our boy AJ and uh, work on stuff sometimes. <laughs>